Hi, my name is Greg Chase. I'm a graduate from the Galvanized Data Science Immersive Program at Denver Platt, and this is a presentation on the capstone I completed in the final weeks of Galvanize. So I've always had a very deep appreciation for medical professionals and what they do. And during undergrad, I discovered my passion for data science and the potential it has to enrich people's lives. So I combined that appreciation and that passion together, and the product of it is iNet, which is a convolutional neural network that is designed to detect diabetic retinopathy. To those that are unfamiliar, diabetic retinopathy is an eye disease that affects the eyes of diabetics. Any diabetic is liable to contract this at some point in their lifetime. It doesn't matter if you're a type 1 or type 2 diabetic, and the probability of contracting this increases as you age. What you see on your screen are retinal images. It's, it's actually the inside of your eye. On the left-hand side, you see a healthy eye. The white circle is the optic nerve, and the dark circle in the center is the macula. And it's a healthy eye. It looks fine. It's something that you would generally expect to see. But what happens is, if you leave your blood glucose levels untreated, the blood vessels in your eyes actually constrict. And the product of that are uh, the veins constricting and blood packets forming inside of your eye. So the product of it is proliferative retinopathy, what we collectively know as blindness. The number I want to start the presentation off with is 93 million. It's a big number, but a significant one, because it's the number of people that live with diabetic retinopathy worldwide. Now, the current diagnosis process is actually still really long, even in 2017. You have to go to your doctor and get your eyes scanned, but the ophthalmologist actually looks at these by hand and classifies the images by hand. And due to doctor-patient confidentiality, you can't disclose these results over the phone, so you have to come in for a follow-up appointment, whether you have retinopathy or not. And as people watching this know, life happens. You either get sick, something happens to your significant other or your kid, and you have to reschedule. So the lead time can take anywhere upwards of 7 to 14 days if you've rescheduled. And in 2017, that just isn't a good enough process. The proposed process that I had was you would go to your doctor and get your eyes scanned, but use iNet as an assistant to your doctor, but not as a replacement. And what you could do is run the images through the classifier, figure out if you have retinopathy or not, and pursue treatment that much faster. And in terms of fast, you can take this entire process down from 14 days to a single hour, which is orders of magnitude faster than the current process. Now, the way we get there, I did mention is a convolutional neural network, but we'll talk about that in a little while. But I'll start off with my data set. It's 35,000 images taken from a 2015 Kaggle competition. The majority of the images you see are actually healthy eyes. It's a good problem to have since the majority of people getting screened don't have anything, but as a data scientist, you do have to rectify this class imbalance. Now, furthermore, the variance between all the images is very high. To most of you looking at these images, they all look the same. But looking at the labels on the right, they're not. Anything above the white line is healthy, and anything below the white line is proliferative retinopathy. Again, blindness. But the neural network, specifically a convolutional neural network, is so good, it can actually figure out the differences between these images, despite that variance. However, it still has to be rectified. To those unfamiliar in data science, you spend 80 to 90% of your time generally doing pre-processing and feature engineering. And when I originally wrote iNet the first time, it wasn't converging properly because I just took the images and fed them through the neural network without any pre-processing. So what I elected to do was crop the image. You'll notice that around the image of the eye, there's a lot of black space, which we define as noise. And all you want is the signal, or as much of it as you can. So what I like to do was crop the image, and yes, you do remove parts of the eye, but you get so much more of the signal and almost none of the noise by cropping these images. And after I did that, I was able to mirror and rotate the images to augment the data set. You can't always do this with some of the images based on how they look, but for images of your eye, you can actually get away with this. So I'm able to take the entire image data set from 35,000 images to 107,000. 
And finally, one of the last things I did was to change the classes, where if you had any degree of retinopathy, you were designated as one, and anyone who was healthy was a zero. And that actually helps to rectify the class imbalance. In part, as you notice on your screen, there's maybe four and a half thousand images difference between it, as opposed to the huge difference you saw on the previous slide. And after the images are normalized, they go through the entire neural network architecture. And it's actually pretty simple to begin with. You have three convolution layers, a single pooling layer. The data gets flattened. It goes through a single dense layer and finally a binary classification layer, indicating if you have retinopathy or not. And after running it through the neural network, uh, the results are fairly interesting. You can talk about accuracy to some extent, but in medicine, we care more about recall because it is better to be safe than sorry. And recall is 77% for a couple of reasons. One is the image quality. As I discussed before, not all images look the same. They're not all perfect, so to speak. And in addition, dropping bad images is something that will have to happen. You'll notice in the bottom right, you'll see an image of an eye that probably shouldn't have made it into the data set. And what I have to do is create a better criteria for dropping bad images based on their color space before I start training the neural network. So moving forward into future improvements, what I'd want to do are two things, one of which is color normalization. Now the data is normalized before going into the neural network, but what I'd want to do is play with the color, maybe change it to black and white, enhance some of the spots on the eyes to make them more pronounced, or potentially work with subtracting the average color from the eyes. I had tried it before, but it didn't work as expected. So I would love to experiment with that. The other is to retrain iNet automatically, whereby when it's deployed to production, you could actually feed it new images. And when you designate the images as good, it would actually retrain the network on its own and get better the more data it gets. So it starts learning to a point the way that humans learn. But there is one more thing. Most of you probably watching in 2017 have got a smartphone. And at this point, uh, the iPhone has actually turned 10 years old. So one of the things I elected to do was a proof of concept to put iNet on the iPhone. And it's not on the App Store, it was purely a proof of concept, but it's actually possible to put my model on a phone. And you do this using an architecture called Core ML, which is developed by Apple in June of 2017. What it allows you to do is take a saved, trained model, convert it using the Core ML Tools library in Python, and it's converted to a .ml model file whereby you can then introduce that file into the iOS development cycle and put machine learning on your phone. This is an example of what it would look like. And you see that there's two photos in the pipeline, and you could classify each one. This photo does not have any diabetic retinopathy that's been detected. And conversely, you have another image that does have diabetic retinopathy. And iNet is pretty sure that that person uh, has a degree of diabetic retinopathy. But you can take this a step further. It's not only putting this in a place like the doctor's office, but giving it to people in remote areas or people that could serve people in remote areas like Doctors Without Borders. You would have to come in with some tools and some of the chemicals to dilate the pupils in your eye to look inside of your eye. But you have the ability now to take this model and this medical imaging technique on a phone to remote areas and give it to people who need it the most. So that's iNet, I'm Greg Chase, and this is my contact information. You can generally reach me on LinkedIn or Twitter first, and you can view my project on GitHub. So thank you, and thanks for watching.